You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. Have you me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag today, and coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. So y'all, the indulgence is about to begin. Hopefully, I won't have to blur too much out. But anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and just jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining, and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go, girl. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Ah, yes, the troop can see how dumb and tiny I am. She snorts dismissively. Don't demean yourself. You've come incredibly far in only a few short days. Loken was right about you. This is your path. I don't understand why it's so important that Loken and I are, are there. He doesn't want to go. The mating troop travel in and out of Elayla. They're a, they're a source of trade. Word about you will spread through them. I'd like the word to be that you're one of us, and that's that. She says it firmly, and I feel oddly warned by her assurance. So you really think I'm a Draconi now? You've always been a Draconi. You were just lost. Now, you found your way home. It's a nice sentiment crossing entire centuries just to find my place. But I'm still a human, a Zephyr. I don't suppose you've seen Loken today. Haven't you? I shake my head and she quickly picks up on my worry. He'll be here soon, no doubt. I suggest you visit the tailors and perhaps use the water makers. Your outfit could do with a wash. She has a point. My clothes are still covered in dust and grime from the black zone. I doubt it's a good look, and I assume the bipeds have better noses than I do. Yeah, alright. Where are they? Past the square, then head towards the farms. You can't miss them. Ask the tailors to find something your size. Great, thanks. And I'll see you again at dusk for the indulgence. A grimace? Yep, the orgy. Good times. She shakes her head, chuckling. What's there to be embarrassed about? I don't have the energy to answer. I just shake my head and get to my feet. It's just a human thing, okay? I'll see you later, Chief. <laughs> Alex? With a final nod, I head back into outside. I quickly find the water makers. A network of crude pipes and ramshackle water tanks wrap around the wooden building. Steam creeps up from within floating blissfully upwards into the air. It blows my mind that the Automunks can still enable enable this level of technological engineering. It's, remar it's remarkable, bizarre, and completely unnerving. Sorry, guys, I lost my train of thought. I forgot the Discord notifications were still on. Next to the showers and the tailor is an open-walled an open -walled hut with countless hanging baskets within, each full to bursting with a random assortment of garments. Seems like clothes are all com communal. They just grab outfits at random, like my hoodie. Most pieces are fashioned after Zephyr clothes. I still don't understand why they do that. There aren't many tribeswomen here. A few are working with the tailors, and a couple exit the showers as I approach. I stop by the tailors first. The woman I speak to, a fox, is very polite despite her unease. She helps me pick out a more casual outfit for after I shower. Thanks. Is there anywhere I could wash my current getup? Oh, uh, we'll take them. You just come back later, and I'll have everything fresh and up for you. I smile, warmed by her generosity. That's great, thanks. I, I really need it. I've been in the black zone getting covered in, uh, dirt. <laughs> I had only meant it as casual, a light-hearted comment. As, see, as I see in her reaction, I realize how stupid it had been. She pulls her hands away from me, her eyes wide with fear. Oh, I, I think we've actually got a clothes to, got lots of clothes to wash today. Uh, why don't you clean them in the hot springs? I hear that's where Loken does. I'm slightly put out by her change of heart, but forced a sympathetic smile. I know it's nothing personal. Right, yeah, I'll do that. Thanks for the new clothes, anyway. Damn, on top of being human, I, we get treated like we've got the plague for being a, being a tainted black runner, too. Oh, right. No bite. I head to the showers. Oh dear. The showers are split off into six larger rooms. I pick one of the empty rooms, preferring to avoid exposing my furless human ass to anyone. Placing my new clothes by the door, I strip down. The cold air freezes my bare skin, and I'm used to the, I'm used to the chill, but I'm used to the chill at this point. There are several sweet-smelling leather bottles piled up in a corner. I assume they must be shampoo, so I take one of the bottles. Inspecting the shower faucets, I find that they're, sim they're just s simple sawn-off pipes. A makeshift pneumatic switch is attached halfway down each one. I turn the nearest one. It sputters and shakes, then begins to spit a crude stream at me. It's pretty hot. Soon the room is fogged up with steam. After a moment just, en just enjoying the water, I pour a dollop of the viscous shampoo-like substance onto my hand and douse my hair with it. It bubbles up quickly, and I begin lathering myself up. Huh. It's minty. Nice. This isn't so bad. I unwrap the bandage on my hand. The cut beneath is pretty minor, so I doubt it needs more treatment. It's a rare moment of quiet where I'm completely alone. Normally, this is where Bite and I would take verbal jabs at each other. Weighed down by fatigue and overwhelmed by my mental solitude, my mind gropes for happy distractions. It arrives at Loken and the upcoming indulgence. Heh, <laughs> I'd much prefer to be showering with him, but I don't know how our cultures would clash if we did something like that. Given... Ah, where's this all this hair coming from? Get off me, hair! <laughs> Given how alone I've been, I've been feeling today, 
could that be why I'm craving his company so much? Hell, could that be why I developed such a swift attachment to him in the first place? The only time people get together here is at the indulgence, with no room for closed-off relationships. They just fuck for one night, and that's it. It's a far cry from the Zephyr way. Um, not necessarily. It's not like I'm in love with him. I barely know him. It's been only a few days. Yep, there's something about how blunt and unrefined he is that's incredibly enticing to me. I saw a hint of it yesterday. Raw, bestial desire that I wish he'd just let loose upon me. It may only be a physical attraction I have, but I do admire him. And I like his company. He's a good hound. Suddenly I hear footsteps. Someone's here! Ah! Venus! <laughs> Gah! Morning, Alex. <laughs> Ryan drops a basket by the doorway and heads over to the opposite side of the room and swiftly turn around. I hear him twitch a shower pump and stand beneath a stream of water. Ah! A hair on my tongue. Um, uh, hey! Are you alright? Uh, fine! I'm trying to hide how timid I feel. He has no qualms having everything out in front of me. Tiger just shakes his head with amusement at my congress, at my coyness. Oh, we're using the shampoo. It's for the thicker pelts, like Loken's. Probably not good good for your bare skin. Here. He's holding out a small, aromatic bar of soap to me. I force myself to turn to face him. Trying really hard to keep my eyes on his face, I take it with burning cheeks. Uh, thanks. Hmm, the white ash is from a kapok tree. Quite rare. He casually dips his head beneath the stream of water as he turns as he turns to as he turns to as he turns the tap. Ah, the water is great. This is why I love visiting the Draconi. Orion takes another bar of soap from his pile and begins scrubbing his fur down. I find myself great gazing at his body. His bulky chest and firm shoulders flex as he rinses his fur. Unable to stop my horny curiosity, my gaze falls lower. Orion takes a pawful of soap and smears it all around his junk. Everything jiggles tantalizingly. You humans don't have sheaths? I snap my eyes away, blushing. Of course. Uh, uh, of course. Ah, of course he saw me looking. Uh, nope. Ah, first time seeing one then? Not, uh, not exactly. I can shower later if you prefer to be alone. No, it's fine. I just, um, I get a little embarrassed. Is that a human thing? Apparently so. All right, I promise I'll keep my eyes on your face. I'm half tempted to just keep looking at his sheath. He doesn't seem to mind, and I'm kind of like how, kind of like to know how they actually work. Huh, maybe Loken can show me. By the way, I hear the one who's, you're the one who saved my son. Whoa! Oh, right then. I spin back around, frowning. Milo is your son? I shouldn't be so surprised. I, I even remember thinking Orion looked familiar when I first saw him. One of them. I think I have two at this village. Or three. It's hard to remember who is where. How many children do you have? Really, Alex? I have no idea. A hundred or more, I'd say. My jaw drops. That's insane! Is it? One of my troop boys, Tomley, he's, work he's, he's working up to 300. But he's proficient, prefers to spread his seed around quickly. The sheer volume of his offspring isn't what shocks me. Your kids are just numbers to you? He shrugs, perplexed by my question. It is a great honor to be part of a mating troop, but we're not fathers. We share the indulgence and then we leave. He flicks his tail free of water droplets. The indulgence is a sad necessity. Many seem to have forgotten why it exists in the first place. Yes, it's a spiritual and sacred event to celebrate, but it came about because of survival. I feel we've grown numb to the looming threat of extinction. That's pretty bleak. How did you how do you join the mating troop anyway? Most men volunteer when they're old enough. Compared to what most clans go through, it's great it's a great life. Traveling the world and being treated with respect. We have to rely on black runners to help us navigate through the black zones. So for many it's the only way to leave the land you're born in safely and see the world. This indulgence thing really is a cultural keystone. And Dravonia is really okay with guys getting it on? He laughs, shrugging his shoulders nonchalantly. You're talking about Loken and I. I'm allowed to. I'm allowed my own indulgences. He has a good heart. I care about him a great deal. Before I can ask a follow-up question, he grins at me. Has he tried to fuck you yet? What? I said, has he fucked you yet? I assume he's waiting for the indulgence, given how he acted yesterday. Oh, come on, I'm his acolyte. He's not waiting for anything. Is that a joke? You're his only other compatible match, and you're a cute little thing with a gorgeous ass. Of course he wants you. My face turns scarlet. Jeez, I thought Loken was blunt. Orion is really something. Thanks, I guess. Will you indulge with him? I don't know how comfortable I am talking about this, let alone while I'm butt-ass nude. I grumble, letting the remaining soap wash from my skin and turning the shower tap off. Uh, I, don't really, I don't really get how you guys do things here. I sense him look curiously at me as I step away to collect my new clothes. I grab a towel and start quickly drying myself. What don't you get? I'm not even sure where to begin. 
Like, I mean, Logan sort of suggested you guys only have sex at the indulgence. Is that true? Not exactly. Opportunities to mate come up outside the event. It's just considered greedy and disrespectful. So, I can fuck outside the indulgence, but it makes me a slut? The indulgence is a joining of many souls, and for a greater purpose beyond pleasure. It's a reminder that despite all we're up against, we're still creatures of the wild, with a natural hunger. Many believe going against that is impertinent to our cause. Surely any breeding is good breeding, Orion laughs. Oh, Alex, I agree. We need to populate. I've no idea how things got this way. I don't think anyone remembers. Dravonia certainly isn't too fussed about when mating occurs. As he speaks, I make a sudden realization and groan in understanding. That's why Luke has been uncomfortable with his flirting. He doesn't want me to think he's some kind of lecher. He's been flirting. Before the indulgence. He must want you a great deal. I... maybe? I just didn't think he cared much about the indulgence. He wouldn't stop complaining about it. Oh, he only complains when I'm not there. I've seen him get into the spirit more than most. So, will you partake with him? I wince. I just... I don't think it's a good idea. Him and I are... It's different for us, isn't it? We're black runners, and I just... Uh, I don't think the whole orgy thing is for me. Tiger mumbles something pensively. Wait for me outside. We'll talk. Huh. Hell, I bet he knows Logan far better than I do. Um, yeah. Sure. Conscious of him potentially looking at my butt as I step out, I quickly tug the loose leggings on and head back outside. Whilst I'm waiting outside the showers, I see something that surprises me hanging outside the tailors. A mirror. I hadn't seen it before. Intensely curious, I step over to check myself. Hey, good looking. A specimen. This is what we're left with, huh? Mm. I immediately regret looking at the stupid mirror. I turn away, wallowing in self doubt. At least the clothes actually fit. The jacket is pretty decent. The clans don't seem to have gotten the hang of shoes yet, though. It doesn't take a ride long to join me. He's redressed and looks considerably fluffier. Ah, much better. It's pretty fucked up that hot showers survived the apocalypse, but toothbrushes didn't. Just another reason to stay in favor with the Autumn Monks. He gestures for me to follow him. Come on, I have something for you. Curious, I set off after him with my old clothes tucked under my arm. Yep, so today is going to be my last day of work. Feels weird. It's going to be my last day of work today. I'm not going to see these people for a while. I can, I'll, I'll always come back and visit when I come see my parents, but, yeah. It's uh, quite a journey. <laughs> Alright, anyway, sorry about that. So, you and Loken, you wouldn't indulge with him? I guess I would, but I'm his acolyte, and we've got Blackrunner things to worry about. So, the indulgence is about shedding your cultured self and divulging your most basic desires, Alex. Outside the indulgence, yes, you're his acolyte. Within it, though... You're an animal like him, and you're there to mate. The way he describes it, the indulgence makes it sound like a mindless vortex of feral lust. I have to admit, it's enticing. Despite the temptation, Elayla's crazy sex culture still feels a bit inhuman, I guess. It's not really for me. Plus, Logan seems really uncomfortable with the idea. Every time we get close, he backs off. He's just trying to respect you, Alex. He'll hold himself back until the indulgence. That's the proper way of doing things here. Were things different with humans? Yeah, very different. We had lots of ways of hooking up, like loads. We didn't have the affliction, so no indulgence. It was pretty varied. We had, mar we had marriage, for example. What's that? Where you uh, fall in love with one person and commit to them for life. You have, like, a big party to celebrate. It was sacred, I, I guess, kind of like how the indulgence is to you guys. Orion snorts at the concept. And this marriage commitment is to a sole partner? Yeah, but it's not just for one night, it's for life. That's inefficient. Sex wasn't about efficiency. Imagine only having one snack at the buffet. Right, as opposed to stuffing your face with everything at once. So you're opposed to a good stuffing. It's not that. Trust me, I've been thinking about Loken a lot. So what's the problem? The timing is perfect. But what happens after the indulgence? After? I don't think I could just get with him at the indulgence and then pretend never it never happened. It's not the human way. Who cares if it's not the human way? I care. Orion shrugs. I suppose you could just convince him to do things as the Zephyr might. I really don't think Logan would want to stop. Once he claims that ass of yours, he'll want to keep it. Isn't that disrespectful? And we're both guys! The last thing I need is a target on my back. Look, Alex, I'm not one to judge. Neither is Devonia. And hers is the only opinion that matters for you. You're both black runners, too. Your business is your own. It's not like you have to tell anyone. I shake my head. I don't even know if I want all this. I'm supposed to be figuring out why I'm here, not getting laid. If Logan said he wanted to pound you all night, would you turn that down? I feel my face turn redder than I think it ever has. 
I, uh, uh, jeez, I don't know. I, I guess not. Orion scoffs. He pauses in his stride to face me. You and Loken are a rare match. He doesn't get companionship very often, unless it's from me. He craves it more than you can imagine. He's right about that. If I don't address the, this thing between Loken and I somehow, it's, it'll, still just, it'll just get awkward. I guess I am fond of him, but if I can give him some kind of happy companionship, why not? He's a good hound. Maybe getting closer to him would mean I could help with his insecurities, or potentially I'd just make them even worse. Orion and I reach one of the carriages that arrive with the mating troop. Tiger signals for me to wait as he starts rummaging through the back. Here, this should help both of you get into the spirit. He drops a small cloth pouch into my hands, held closed by a lace around the top. Curious, I go to open it. I wouldn't do that, unless you want to start the indulgence early. I look up and see Orion wink at me. I scowl when I realize what he's just given me. This is flair, isn't it? It sure is, friend. Why? Just take it. You don't have to abandon your human side to fuck like one of the clan. I look down at the package, unsure how to feel. I'll admit, it's kind of tempting. If you don't want it, that's fine. I'll have it back. It's valuable stuff. Do you really think that's what he'd want? Orion shrugs his shoulders. I want him to be happy. I think you'll make him happy, Alex. Confused, but happy. Confused and happy. <laughs> I'll think about it. I put the package in my bath pocket. In my back pocket. Bath pocket. Good. I need to see what my boys are that my boys are ready, so I'll let you get on. Talk to you later, Alex. Alright, bye, and thanks. He gives me a very low bow. I roll my eyes at him, grinning. He's quite the charmer. I can see why Taki wants to turn with him wants to turn with him. I have nothing much left to do in the village. I figure I'll return to the lodge to get some sleep. As I reach the outskirts of the village, a pair of familiar figures come into view. My heart jumps. Hey! Alex! Ah, oh, good, good! You're here, you're here! You're well? Hey, Aeon, I'm fine, just tired, didn't get much sleep. I look up at Logan, quietly quietly still anxious that he's upset about something. I give, him a, I give him a smile. To my relief, he gives me a warm smile back. Hey, Logan. Alex. Once he's been acknowledged, he steps over to me and stands by my side like a guard dog. I smirk, amused by his placement. You're wearing different clothes. Yeah, my old stuff needs a wash after yesterday. I show him my old set of clothes. Okay, we will do this tomorrow. He gestures to Aeon. I have informed Aeon of our task in the Black Zone yesterday, and of those memory boxes. Oh, yes, yes! Bad business, Alex, very bad. Whatever you found, it's big. So big. Bigger than anything. The Black Zone is aroused by this discovery. There's more. Giovanni told me there are Black Runners still missing from last night. They must have been in the zones when they went crazy. Look, his face falls. He looks away, pensively, while Aeon scratches his chin. If you keep going after this, boys, it's going to get worse. I'll have other concern. I have other concerns, too, I do. Aeon looks around the village, as though, as though cautious of eavesdroppers. He leans in a little closer. Logan and I do the same. I know the Autumnks, but even I only ever glimpse their workings. They're always three steps ahead, always. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. It looks like we're probably gonna get to the indulgence in the next episode. Oh boy, we got a little taste of uh, Orion. What Orion's got to offer in this episode. So, yeah. We'll see how, how how edited this is compared to how much editing I'm going to have to do after. Anyway, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.